turning and just having a little more control but <laughs> this week I found out that um, skating while you're really tired and your muscles are tired and like you've already done a workout in the day is really not good let me tell you why so um last Thursday I decided to skate around uh, a little bit at the church because I use the gym a lot and I'll just skate around in there and it was youth night so I was gonna use my skates in the game it was a whole thing anyway so I'm like skating around warming up whatever I'd already skated earlier that day and done a morning workout it was a whole it was a whole thing and like I can feel that I'm sore right I'm like oh whew, I'm a little tired and I had all my gear on anyway so I was wearing all my gear, but I could feel that I was tired and sore because all of the stuff I'd done. But I'm like, you know what? I really want to skate, so so I'm gonna skate anyways. So I was skating around or whatever, and all of a sudden I kind of lost my balance a little bit, didn't know what happened, and I fell backwards a little bit and landed on my butt. And you know, no big deal. It kind of hurt my tailbone a little, like hurt my back a little, because like, you know, I just went whoop, on my butt. But whatever, I'm like, okay, that was weird. I don't know why I fell. I don't know how I fell. I've never fallen backwards before, so that was weird. But I'm like, yeah, whatever, it's no big deal. I'll keep going. I must have just hit something. And this is the moment, Paige knew. She was too tired. Anyway, so I kept skating around for a little longer and I ended up skating. And I went to go do something in the cafe. I just kind of rolled in the cafe real quick. But as I was going up to the cafe door down in the gym, somehow, someway, I'd lost my balance and my muscles gave out on me so bad, my skates flipped out from under me and I landed flat on my back um, on the gym floor. Yeah, that's what happened. So I had my knee pads on, I didn't actually have my elbow, elbow pads on, which was not good. Um, because I'd left them at home, but I had my wrist guards on and I fell backward and I like got back up. There was this loud crunch in my body. Like have you ever like crunched a bag of chips? That's what my back sounded like. Anyway, I don't know why I'm telling you guys all this right now. Uh, anyway, so whatever. It's like, I didn't cry. I got back up, like laughed it off. It's like, yeah, wow. Look at me go. I'm a klutz. Um, ended up really bruising my wrist a bit. Like, I think I must have landed on um, my wrist guard funny or something. It did some kind of, like, they're not supposed to hurt your wrist, but I must have fallen just right. Uh, bruised up my elbow, but also, um, I did something somehow to my neck. So I can't move my neck a whole lot. Um, I'm working on that. Um, but yeah, so 
Don't skate when tired. Don't do extra physical activity when you're tired. Take care of your body. Listen to your body. When your body says stop, you listen to it. So there's my lesson of the week. <laughs> anyway, let's go in. Now that you've listened to my pointless story for no reason, and now you're like, Pastor Paige, why? Why did we let you get skates? Why did we let you do this? Why are we doing this? Why are we letting this happen? Um, <laughs> I'm having fun. Um, let's go into a time of worship and worship God together and come together and learn about him, all right? Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. is so good it's so big and there's nothing that can stop it your love is so strong and powerful and just such a light in our lives there is nothing in this world that can bring it to an end and God we just thank you that today we are gonna get to focus on your love and on try to wrap our heads around how much you love us God we just thank you for this time together in Jesus name everyone said amen all right, amen, everyone. So I know you guys have put up with my bad magic tricks for two weeks now. So I'm actually gonna show you a real, not a real magician, but a magician who's actually good at tricks and illusions. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the wording there. Uh, I'm actually gonna show you guys someone who's actually good at doing these tricks and illusions uh, to give you a break, and then we're gonna talk about it a little bit. Sound good? Awesome. I will now attempt, with the help of these two lovely ladies, to pull a real live bunny rabbit out of this very magical hat. Would you like to see that? Yeah? All right. How about the rest of you? Would you? All right, here we go. A spin, a wave, and a snap, and she's in there. Now the hard part, she's gone. This guy's amazing. 
<laughs> don't have a tie, do I? <laughs> Let's try again. But this time, Ashley and Kim, will you please wave your hands over the hat and snap? Go ahead. Wave and snap. Oh, look, we did it. Look right here. You see what you see what I see? Look right here. It's just a little hair. You know, like the tortoise. <laughs> Let's look under the table. Do you see anything? Do you see anything under the table? Neither do I. Let's try one more time. Will you all help me please wave your hand and snap? We did it. Look, a real live bunny rabbit out of the hat. I knew we could do it. Feel how soft she is. Isn't she cute? Doesn't she look real? She is real. She's feel how soft. So this magician, you know, he pulled a rabbit out of the hat, which is a very traditional magician trickery um, trick. And to be honest, I do not know how this one's done. So I know I've said, I said that I will reveal the tricks, but this one I don't actually know how it's done because I can't do it. And I did try to look into it a little bit, but there were so many different ways. But I don't know if you know how it's done, please let me know. Um, my best guess is that there was like a pocket or something on, um, cause he had that curtain on his, on his table there. He had that cloth on his table. So I'm wondering if there was a pocket or some sort of something that the bunny was just sitting in. And so when he took the, um, curtain off to show the table and he put it in the hat that the bunny was in there and he was carefully and he put it in the bunny and just put it in the bunny. Put the, <laughs> put the cloth in the hat and then carefully took out the bunny and then took off the cloth and there was the bunny. That's my best guess. Um, I'm not sure though, but I will show you one of my magic tricks, okay? You ready? So um, get ready for another uh, page, pastor page pizzazz magic trick, all right? So in this box, I am going to put my hand, I think, yeah. So I'm gonna put my hand in the box, see, there it is. And then there's this little thing here that I'm gonna hold on to. And I am going to rotate my hand completely around, all right? You ready? Hold on, I need, I forgot my magic wand! Got it, now I can do the trick. All right, so I'm just gonna do a quick rotate. All right, so now my wrist is kind of looking like this at the moment. So to bring it all the way around, I'm gonna have to go, ooh, it's already uncomfortable. I'm gonna twist it just a little more. So I'm gonna twist it just enough there so my hand is currently like this. So I'm gonna go bibbity, bobbity, boo, and then I'm gonna keep twisting. All right, here we go. All right. Boom shakalaka, I just, rotated my wrist 360 degrees and I feel great. See, it's all whoop -a -doo. fine. Okay, I know this trick was not impressive at all, mainly because of the mistakes I made as well as it's not that convincing. Uh, but anyway, just so you guys do know what I did, in case you thought it was magic, it wasn't, it was trickery. <laughs> um, so as I'm turning it, so I'm gonna just turn the box. So this is what I was doing, just watch in here. So I was twisting, twisting, and then when I got to the part where it looked like this for you guys, what I did was I let go because obviously my arm was getting quite twisted and I just re-grabbed the box there. Make sense? And I kept twisting. Like I said, not that impressive, but you guys got to see a cool magician trick earlier. So we're good. Anyway, so I could have kept going and going and going and twisting and twisting my arm and it, I could have made it look like it never stopped. But obviously it was a trick. It was an illusion and deception, which I revealed to you. Anyway, but this kind of brings me to our big idea today, which is God will never stop loving me. Did you hear that? I was really in our worship song today, God will never stop loving me. No matter what, God will love us and love you and love me and love everyone around us. But just in case you don't believe me, we're going to read three, three <laughs> parables today. We're gonna read two of them and I'm gonna show you the video for the last one. Sound good? 
All right, I'm going to go get my Bible. All right, so we are going to Luke 15, verses 1 to... 1 to 32, but we're only going to be reading some of it, okay? So I'm going to read the two parables and then we'll watch the third, all right? Are you ready? There's kind of a theme with these three, which is why we're doing it. So now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. And what was the parable again? Do you remember? It's a short story that has a deeper meaning that shows God, shows God's love or something about God. It reveals something about God within the story, okay? All right, so suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. This, song, this was actually part of our song today. Does he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that it is the same way. There will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than 99 righteous people who do not repent. Or sorry, I'm going to reread that last one. I tell you that the, that in the same way there will be rejoicing in heaven, more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. So um, in our song today, it talked about you leave the 99. This is this parable it's talking about when, you know, we leave the 99 sheep to go after one. Because that one, that one that's far away, the one that got away, is more important than the 99 that are still there. Which we're going to talk about more. But we're going to read another parable. Are you ready? So it continues on. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Does she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and say, Rejoice with me. I found my lost coin. In the same way, in the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of angels of God over one sinner who repents. Are you catching the the the, the repetition here, the, what we're talking about? How that one person is so important. Bringing one person back to Jesus is so important. And now since I know you just listened to me read two parables, I'm going to let you watch the third, all right? So enjoy the third parable. Jesus once told a parable about a father and his two grown-up sons. The wise father knew that his younger son wasn't prepared for a real life. You see, the son wanted to leave home, so he asked his father for his inheritance, a lot of money. The kind father was very rich and very generous, so he gave his son what he wanted. The son packed up his belongings, hopped on his horse, and went off into the world. His father loved him and was disappointed to see him go. He was concerned about what would happen to his son. His younger son was immature, wasteful, and not prepared to live responsibly. The father was right. The younger son had no concern for tomorrow and lived only for today. He had tons of money and went to do all the wild and crazy things that a foolish young man could dream of. Girls, drinking, parties. He thought it was great. Everyone wanted to be his friend. But that did not last long. It was not long until the son lost all his money. Suddenly, no one wanted to be his friend. He became an outcast in a foreign land. No money, no friends, and no food. The young son realized his foolishness. All that he had was gone. Then he did the only thing he could think of to try and find some work so he could eat. Oh, he found a job, all right. But it was the worst job imaginable. He fed pigs. In his culture, pigs were unclean. Just to touch them was considered wrong and defiling. The young man was so hungry that he even started thinking about eating the pig's food, but no one gave him any. Suddenly, a thought came to him. 
Why was he here, lonely, hungry, and miserable? Why did he leave his father's house? I will go back, the son decided. Even if I have to feed the animals, I'd rather do it in my father's house. If my father is angry, so be it. I deserve it. I just need to come home. And so he did. Dirty and bedraggled, tired and worn, he journeyed back to his father's house. He was still far from home, but then he saw someone running towards him on the path. Who was this? Who could it be? It was his father. So our big idea today is God will never stop loving me, right? Simple, easy, and we see this in these parables. I know it sounds like, well, in the first one, we talked about a sheep. In the second one, we talked about a coin. In the third one, we talked about one son. But in reality, you guys, what we're actually reading about is how God sees his people. How God will never stop loving you. Even though he has 99 sheep, he still sees you and he still knows you and he still wants you to come home safe. And he wants you to come back to him. Even though God has nine other coins, that's six page. <laughs> Even though God has nine other coins, he still is cleaning and searching the house for you. Because he loves you and he will never stop. And then we read this story. Most of you probably knew this parable of the lost son. It's a very, very classic parable. We talk about it a lot. About a son who told his dad, hey, dad, I'm out of here. Give me what my money and I'm gone. Saying that his father's dead to him. Saying, I'm done with you. I'm done with our family. And then he goes and spends all of his money. And all of a sudden is living with pigs and like eating slop and working for someone who doesn't care about him and realizes, I have a father who loves me. Instead of being here in this pain and in this suffering and in this bad place, I need to go to him. And he will love me and he will take care of me. Right? And then what happens? The son returns home. And does the dad just say, oh, cool, nice to see you. Nice way you made it back. Now go do this, 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 because now you owe me. No, that's not what he did, is it? What he did is he welcomed his son with open arms, rejoicing in the fact that he came home. Rejoicing that his son, who was once lost, is now back. That's how God is with us, you guys. It's how he feels over the people who've walked away from God or the people that don't know him yet. He's waiting and searching and rejoicing when they come home. Are we saying that in these parables, the 99 sheep, the nine coins, and the other son weren't important anymore? No, because in this part of the parable, in the third one, the dad kind of says, all that I have is yours. Your brothers come home and I am so happy he's home. But you have not lost my blessing. You have not lost the riches of my, of my love. Your brother's just refinding them now. Kind of a theme because God never stops loving us. No matter what we do. No matter if we run away and say, God, I'm done with you. He welcomes us back. When we are drifting away from God, he leaves the 99 sheep and he comes after us. When we feel like we are lost or missing or not knowing what's going on, God searches for us, just like the coin. And obviously, right now, you're probably watching this at home, so you are safe at home and you don't feel lost, you don't feel scared or anything. But there are times that, even in places we know so well, we can feel lost or scared or like we want to run. But God is with us and he loves us and he is standing with us. No matter where we go, God is with us and he will love us forever.
Anyway, all of this to say, God will never stop loving you. He is with you. He is searching for you when you feel lost. He is beside you. And this is something we can't forget. Because the love of our Father is so big and so great and so mighty that there is nothing else. Nothing is greater than what he gives us. So this week, I want you to really kind of just soak in that love. And I know that says fun, sounds funny. When you're praying this week, I want you to just really focus on that love that God has for you and realize how loved you are by God. And no matter what happens, he's there for you. No matter how hard things are, he's there for you. No matter how far you run, he's there for you. And share that with someone around you this week. Share the love of God with them. All right, you guys, I hope you had fun today. Uh, it was kind of a big, big, he heavy lesson that I was very passionate about because sometimes, I'm not going to lie, I forget that God loves me. I forget and I lose that feeling of, you know, that God loves me and he will be there for me and he will leave the 99. There's no shadow he won't light up, no mountain he won't climb up. And he loves us that much. And I don't want you guys to forget that. God loves you, okay? He loves you so much and he's going to love you forever, okay? Anyway, I can keep going and going about how much God loves you, but I want God to show that to you this week. So spend some time in prayer and just spending time with God to really understand that. Anyway... Hope you guys had fun today, and as always, I love you, I miss you, and I hope to see you soon. Bye. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathe your life in me and you have been so so kind to me